And your kind is not in this moment, Father God. There is a word in the atmosphere. So I would just ask in the name of Jesus that you would continue to look on your people, oh God. Such a great people, God. Touch them as you have before and you realize your servant. In Jesus' name I pray. And let every heart say, thank God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give the Lord a hand, clap people, God. entitled The Performance is Over. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Galatians, the first chapter in the 10th verse. We're going to head over to Proverbs 29 and 25. First in Galatians 1 and 10, it reads, For do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Now unto Proverbs 29 and 25, it reads, It is dangerous to be concerned with what people think of you. But if you trust in the Lord, you are saved. It was Charles Swindoll who said, the secret to failure is to try to please everybody. So the great question before every believer is, if it is expedient, safe, pleasurable, or popular among men, but what is right in the sight of Almighty God. We cannot be genuine ministers if we attempt to please people and water down the gospel. Come on now. And as born again believers, we don't want to live in error by being people pleasers. Amen. Amen. For by doing so, we hinder the grace of God Amen. from working in our lives by valuing someone's opinion more than the word of God. As servants of Christ, we got to choose a side. Amen, amen. It is either going to be on the side of performance-based religion, hallelujah, without genuine power, or it's going to be a heartfelt relationship with Christ who has the ability to make us real. Which brings me to my last two points. We got to be released from the opinion of man. And my second point is grace has counseled the performance. In Galatians 1 and 10, the Apostle Paul addressed being released by the opinion of man with a question. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please man, yes. I should not be a servant of God. Yes. And the very reason he posed this question is because false teachers were perverting the truth. Yes. By teaching in order to be saved, a convert had to adhere to the law of Moses plus Jesus Christ. In other words, they were trying to please men. However, Paul was letting them know that he had been released from the opinionated doctrines of the Pharisees. Yeah. And he was not willing to tone down or lower the standards of the gospel in order to get on their good side. Oh, yeah. Can you say amen? amen? Let's notice the word servant in our passage. Yeah, yeah. It carries the ideal of a bond servant, which in the Greek, means one who gives himself wholly to another's will. Hallelujah. I've been praying for yes, that. Yes, yeah. It is to be devoted to another regardless of our personal interests. Therefore, with this 
in mind, Paul's number one concern, his number one objective was to please Almighty God. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. And he was not about to allow the Galatians to call him back into the bondage that Jesus delivered him from. Oh, 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 oh. Glory be to God's name. I can pray for the people of God. He had a no-nonsense conviction when it came to his commitment to Christ. Yes. I believe one of my favorite preachers, the late Charles Spurgeon, said it best when he declared something. Huh? What did he declare, declare man of God? Huh? If Christ be anything, huh? he must be everything. Yes. Now, 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 let me talk to you. Allow me to precaution you. Huh? Everyone is not glad for when you get saved. Uh -huh. And believe it or not, uh -huh, some of our old friends would try to call us back into the mix. Uh -huh. Have you ever been there? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. However, as believers, what we basically have to do, we got to yeah. make a firm stand like Paul. Uh -huh. So when our old friends come singing that old song, let's do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to come to you and they're going to be singing songs to you on that order saying, let's do it again. <laughs> we got to have the option to have a, a firm stand with Almighty God. <laughs> For the Bible says in Revelation 3 and 11, I come quickly and hold tight. Mm, to what you have so that no man will steal your crown. Can I testify for a moment? I can remember shortly after I got saved, I saw one of my homeboys in the parking lot. And they used to call me Boo. And he said, Boo man, I give you six months and you are going to be back out here with us. Wow. Well, it's been over 42 years. Ooh, and by God. the grace of God, I am yet holding on. For I am determined to hold on That's to right. my conviction just Hallelujah. like Paul did. In Philippians in the third chapter when he said, but what things were gained to me, yes, uh, yes, yes, those God. things yeah. I count lost. Yes. Yet doubtless I count all things but Lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Uh, you know, when you get saved, uh, a lot of times some of the things that are precious to you, uh, you are going to have to lose uh, in order to gain. Right, and for it. this reason, uh, I gave up putting on an image uh, to try to impress people uh, by faking game, uh, by living for the weekend, uh, by chasing money. And although sometimes it was hard to say no to easy, I had resolved in my mind that I no longer wanted to be held hostage with people stroking my ego and speaking smooth things that had nothing to do with righteousness of God. Speak life. Can I talk to your people of God? Mm. That's why in uh, Proverbs 29 and 25, it says it is dangerous to be concerned with what people think about you. Amen. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. And in the 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah, the 17th and the 18th verse, God is making a declaration to the people of God that says, remember not the former things, uh -huh. uh, neither consider the things of old. Uh, in other words, when it comes come to your past, uh, God don't want you to either be, e to be concerned about that because he got you. How has he got you? He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Yes. Now it shall spring forth. God said that he would make a way in the wilderness. In other words, when it seems like nothing is happening in your life, uh -huh. that's a wilderness for you. Uh -huh. When nothing is happening, believe you me, in heaven, everything is. Right. So I'm sure 
in the same way. God has kept a lot of us in his loving arms. Amen. And notice this, folks. Uh, once you have been touched by the power of God, once you have been touched by the power of God, the opinion of men and our old priorities, they become a fading memory. And I think it was Paul that says, uh, if any man be in Christ, behold, all things are new. And that old lifestyle yes. is over and done with. Right. Now, I want to head to my last point. In Galatians, the fifth chapter in the first verse, Paul specified instruction on how to avoid a performance-based religion. And when I say performance-based religion, I'm just talking about people coming into church, acting, yeah. not keeping it real. Say that. It reads, it reads, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Amen. Yes, Paul understood something. Paul understood that a supernatural uh, conception in a miraculous and miraculous born again. We are miraculously born again by the promises that Jesus Christ mm -hmm. fulfilled when he went to Calvary's cross. Mm. Not our works. Mm -hmm. There was no way in the world that we could uh, 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 become born again on our own because we was impotent in the eyes of Almighty God. Amen. But there was a supernatural conceiving that God transpired when he saved us. But what is Paul advising us here? He is telling us how to stay steadfast mm -hmm. in the new life. When he says stand fast in the liberty where we, Christ has set us free, he's telling us that in the new life, there's some sustaining power. There's a keeping power that almighty God has for us. But in order to avoid it, we got to avoid going back into the bondage of legalism mm. and the law, which has nothing, has no relationship with salvation. Yes. Can I break it down a little bit more? Break it down. When, when, when you are caught up into a, to a tradition and trying to live this life in your own power, Believe it or not, what that basically is, is legalism. You're bringing yourself under the law again. And that don't have anything to do with salvation because Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, not yes. legalism, not the law, which strengthens me. Yes. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you giving anything out of this people down? Hallelujah. This life is, is about the awesome, in other words, it's about the awesome power of God. We are kept by the power of God. In, in, in reality, none of us can live safe. Mm -hmm. Amen. None of us can live safe. But when it comes to the power of God, the Holy Spirit keeping us, Amen. that's what we have to basically rely on, people of God. Amen. It's not about us. Now, the word entangle in this passage means to twist, mm -hmm. to interweave, to make, confuse, or disorder like when thread or yarn or rope is twisted or tangled up. Mm -hmm. So what Paul is warning the Galatians, uh, don't get confused or twisted by performing good works in order to try to make yourself perfect in the eyes of God. Because the question is, how good is good enough? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't go back to a religion that's based on man's opinion, hallelujah, works and performance, we got to stand firm, people of God. Yes, that's right. Mm, we got to stand firm, like the story of the African boy. Yeah. Mm, when the missionary went back to his, uh, her country, he told the witch doctors, me, no, go Amen. back. Amen. We don't have to go back to the lifestyle that we had Amen. that Jesus delivered us out of. Amen. And when you really think about it, the only 
direction that we should be going in is forward. That's right. Amen. Moving it forward. Amen. The only direction that we should be going in is forward. Yes, Lord. Have yes. And I say this. I just want to keep it real. Yes. If we perform religious work for a thousand years, those acts, no matter how good they are, would never renew our soul or our inside man. Mm -hmm. And when all is said and done, Jesus said the performance is over. Amen. Galatians 2 and 14 confirms it by saying, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, that was contrary to us. Colossians 2 and 14 says, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us. The law was against us, people of God. That's right. That's right. And God took it out of the way. So the performance is over. Amen. In closing, this is what I basically want to just leave with you. I told you last week that don't bite the pay. In other words, believing that you can get yourself together before you come to God, none of us can get ourselves together. Amen. Amen. Because salvation is the work of God and not man. Amen. Amen. It was never in our power to get ourselves together. Yeah. It's not on us. In Romans 8 and 3, it says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak. The law was weak. The law was a schoolmaster to show man that there was something wrong on the inside. Mm -hmm. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they was living under the curse. Right. And what happened was that man had obtained a sinful Adam nature. Mm -hmm. And that, that nature was disobedience according to the book of Ephesians. It was a disobedient nature. Okay. Amen. And regardless of what a person tried to do, that nature was always going to act itself out when you were saved. So, you know, you, you, you can come, come, come into church bearing gifts, working, working in all types of, uh, of auxiliaries. If your insides right. are not right, you're going to continue to perform because you, that nature does not agree with the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. The performance yeah, is over. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand, clap, people. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord God. Now, what I basically yeah. want to do, I just want to turn it over to the hands of Pastor. Yeah. Girl, let's receive her by saying amen. 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 amen.